what is going on guys welcome back to the channel it's been a long one it's been a long one but drifting season's here and we're basically getting ready to go so let's start off uh i have some issues going on with the daily so again she must have knew hey it's drift season so you know what i need to start acting up so we can get some work done mainly i've been driving i've noticed that i've had a bit of oil consumption uh happening and uh it, it hasn't been in the oil catch can or anything um i haven't seen any drips or any leaks on the ground uh, but it's somewhere it's been going somewhere. So uh, I did a little bit of research started looking and what I've noticed is uh, On the back side of the passenger side of the plenum behind it uh, There's a plug that goes to the camshaft that plug. It looks like it's leaking I can't tell because it's so tight here um, It's either that or a valve cover on this side because I've only seen oil when I go under the car on this side not on that side so I'm gonna do a plenum pull, I'm gonna take all this off, uh, just check everything, and if I have to reseal something, I went to Z1, got all my uh, kits for that, so all my gaskets and uh, RTV, all that I got. Then we're gonna do an oil change on this girl anyways, cause it's well overdue. And then from there, uh, we're gonna start working on the drift car, so I'm super excited about that. I haven't, obviously, in a while, and I miss her. A couple things that I bought for the drift car are actually gonna be I bought some coil pack actual connectors. Uh, these connectors are so old and brittle, they've broken. And a lot of times when I initiate into drift in the beginning, sometimes if I hit a bump or even if I'm in drift and I hit a bump, uh, coil pack two will pop up and I have a miss. And then that miss causes me to either lose my drift or it just doesn't let me initiate into drift. So. I got those so I can fix those. So that's gonna be super cool. I'm gonna get that into it. It's gonna be a simple, just a D pin, repin, bang, plug it in, done. We're gonna work on that dent too. Uh, that might be a separate video off of this one, but I am gonna try to work on the dent today. I bought these. So basically it's a vacuum pump. So I, I went on to like an auto body store, like online, whatever, and I, I checked it out and they had some of these but they were like $50 for one or something like that, or $50 for two. This comes with three, and this one is bigger than the actually one that I would have gotten out of that package. So this was on Amazon, this was like 25 bucks. And how it works is basically, it's just like a pump. So just like a blood pressure cuff, you just pump this up, this pad is gonna expand, and as it expanded and expands, what I'm thinking is it's gonna be able to push this out. So that's the overall goal. I'm gonna try to push this out. And even if one doesn't do, I have three, so I can stuff three in there and just work all three together and try to see if I can kind of push it out from there. Uh, if I can get enough pressure where I can kind of press it out a little bit, I'm also gonna use the suction cups from Jake and Taylor to try to pull it out while I'm doing that too. I've been thinking at work recently with a couple coworkers and stuff, and I was just like kind of dreading it. I'm like, oh, like I don't wanna mess up the wrap and whatever this and that, but I, actually it might be time to change it up. So I, I've been in some communications with uh, Andrew, obviously, talking to him, seeing like what I kind of want to do, if I want to paint the car, if I'm gonna wrap the car. And just a bit of information that I've gone over is that if you'll be lucky to get two or three years out of a wrap in general in just a daily driver car that doesn't go through the crap that it goes through in drifting. So I'm thinking, you know what? It's been three, this will be the third season with it. And I mean, it's kind of thrashed. So I kind of want to switch it up and kind of do something new and uh, keep it exciting again and have you guys all excited about it. Cause I know how everybody was with this. So, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out after this whole dent situation gets finished. I'm going to wait on this for right now to take all this off. Cause I just drove from Boston back to the house. So uh, this stuff is still pretty hot and I really don't want to get burned by taking anything off. So I'm going to let this cool down for a little bit longer. So let's just start working on repinning or depinning and repinning the connector harness. All right, guys. So with this new uh, clip here, as you can see, you can see those three tabs in there. Okay, those three tabs is what we need to pull, like pull down with either like a pick or whatnot. So uh, my dad actually found his pick. So you can just use something as simple as this, and all you do is you just kind of go in, you push the pick against the tab where it would open up, where these. Once you pull that tab over, these you're able to just kind of slide right out. And these are just the connectors, as you can see. So um, they do have little rubber gaskets, so like no moisture or anything can get in there. Um, so once you pull, once you put the pick in, depending on the direction of wherever the actual uh, connector goes, you're gonna kind of just 
put it to one side, you're gonna hear a click, and then as you're doing that, you're gonna hold the pick against that, and then pull out with your other hand uh, the connector, and then you're good to go. So this is the first connector down. I got five more to go. Once you guys actually get these in, they'll actually click in. You'll hear a good significant click, and there you go, it's done. Pretty simple. The Z1 kit also does come with these top caps here, and that's just to make sure that the wires stay in place and they don't back out on you. All the connectors are on, all brand new, looking good, super excited about that. So basically that's all set for the drift car. Um, I'm practically just gonna throw everything back up and whatnot. Um, again, I still gotta kinda work on these wires here. So uh, before I get into the actually this, I'm gonna start uh, taking apart the daily. So what we're gonna have to do with the daily is start taking the plenum off, start taking off all, basically practically everything that I have over there off is gonna be the same exact thing here. So you gotta do the uh, balance bar or the balance beam, the fuel lines, all that, so I can get this plenum off so we can see where this leak's coming from. So uh, I got the plenum off in 20 minutes. So I think that's the quickest time I've ever gotten it off. As you guys can see, there's some oil residue right here. That's just because anytime I would fill up, uh, I would spill some. So that's the reason why. That's looking pretty brown and wet there. All honesty, it might be the rings. That's why it might be burning oil like crazy. I took off the spark plug tube protector insulator thing and you can see all that oil. You can see that oil there. There's none up there in the front, but it's you can see it clearly there and there. I think overall these seals in here just weren't done good. I think that's what it is because it doesn't look like... Yeah, it's not. it's not coming from the plugs. No, so wherever this is coming from, all that's wet, yeah. So all that's wet right here and right here. So uh, maybe just the seal didn't work. Maybe we didn't let the RTV set uh, for too long or whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, uh, go ahead and grab, take this valve cover off, take this valve cover off and just reseal them. I have a whole new kit, so I might as well just do it. Uh, what I found out, okay, is where the leak was actually coming from. So the leak was actually coming from, there were multiple leaks. So uh, it was coming from this valve cover as we saw before, cause it was kind of leaking into the spark plug uh, chambers. And then on top of that, it was also leaking from right here from the VTCs. Um, this typically happens a lot just on these corners because uh, the seals that you get sometimes just don't work that well. Um, so uh, I spoke with Robbie and Mark and what we're gonna do is uh, like Andrew and I did before is put RTV here, but we're also gonna put some RTV around uh, these edges, these corners over here with this. And then again, the same thing, RTV up here in these little corners. Uh, and we should be good to go there. So now I just gotta clean up all this RTV off this uh, valve cover and this. And then uh, from there, we'll just 
redo our steps, put some oil in her and see how she runs. Day two of this whole ordeal or whatnot. Um, pretty, everything was pretty straightforward and simple last night. I just had to kind of let the uh, RTV kind of sit um, and basically just let it kind of do its thing, get pliable. Um, what I did is basically I laid the RTV, I let it sit for about a half an hour and then going on from there, from that half hour, what I did is uh, I placed it onto the actual motor and then what I did is slightly tightened all the bolts. Um, I did like, I just snug them down, let the car sit overnight came back outside and then just tightened them all down after obviously uh with the z-spec kit you want to make sure you use a uh, blue loctite so the bolts don't back out and you obviously you want to make sure that you're not going to over tighten them because you can crack the actual uh valve cover so this is as she sits right now everything's back up everything's locked down i have the plenum gasket there all i basically got to do is just redo all my steps put the plenum back on and hook up everything uh so I was able to find, obviously, the uh, oil leak. The oil leak was coming from the VTC. This corner here was coming drip, dripping down, and then also this corner here. So this corner is pretty tough to deal with just because like, when you're trying to get your hands in there, trying to get this back on, sometimes the RTP cannot sit right or whatnot. So basically, that's what we ran into. The oil was leaking there, there. So I also had a small leak from the oil tree gasket. Um, we did replace that when we did the whole overhaul. I don't know if it was just something wasn't tight enough or whatnot. So uh, basically, it's very simple to do this. All you have to do is just unplug the module right there that you see that line running to uh, the oil filter. All you do is unplug that. There's four bolts up top, and then you just pull it off. Um, it's going to be a little hard to pull it off because there is a seal, uh, like O-ring on there. But once you pull that off, you're good to go. And there's four, uh, again, four bolts up there. You just unbolt it to our four 12 millimeter bolts pull it off, change the gasket, put it back on, and you're good to go. Now, what I'm doing is I also noticed that I had a small power steering leak. So that po small power steering leak came actually from uh, one of the lock, wa or not lock washers, but uh, one of the copper washers. I, maybe it was just shot from whatever. Uh, we did reuse them when me and uh, Robbie replaced the st power steering rack. Uh, I just noticed that the fluid was kind of going down and down a little bit. I looked under and the boot was kind of wet and I was like, if this brand new rack is leaking i'm going to be extremely upset but i looked at it and it was just uh the little banjo bolt that goes to the rack so i got two of those from z1 so i'm just going to throw those copper washers on and tighten it down It'll be good to go no more leaks anywhere no oil no power steering nothing and if you guys are trying to figure out exactly what i'm talking about this is the banjo bolt it's the smaller one on the power steering rack uh, 14 millimeter uh these copper washers were actually pretty shot they're actually right there but these are the new ones so one goes up top once you put it onto the banjo, banjo bolt, then the other one will go on the bottom of the threads, basically. And then you just tighten it down and you're good to go. So, yeah, I couldn't really believe it when I was actually working on the car and stuff. And I noticed that power steering was going down. I was actually pretty upset. I was like, this cannot be real. This cannot be happening. And when I saw the leak was right here on the bottom of the boot. And I was like, huh. But what was really weird, I think it was only going doing it under pressure when I was driving. Because if it was sitting, there was no spots or anything under the car all right guys so got everything buttoned up uh just waiting to see i just put some oil in we're gonna kind of let it cycle we're gonna put it under some load as I'm putting, uh, I'm gonna have my dad put it under load a little bit. I'm gonna go under the car, see if it is leaking anywhere. Um, and then again, in those main spots where I just fixed, I'm gonna try to see if it is leaking. So, well, besides that, as of right now, I notice on my oil pressure gauge, it's consist, it should be where it is in the uh, overall spectrum where it should be on the gauge itself. So that's good. Um, so that's a positive sign off the rip. Uh, the power steering is not leaking anymore. So that's also, a good sign. So while we're waiting for the daily to kind of get the operating temp before we start kind of uh, revving it and seeing where if there's any leaks or anything like that, uh, I do want to let you guys know in the next couple of weeks, uh, I will be working on the drift car. So again, my intention was to work on the drift car, which I was able to, I was able to swap those uh, coil plugs uh, connectors out, which is cool, but I still have to work on the dent. I still have to uh, fix that rubbing through the harness. Um, so I have a bunch of footage of that and I'm going to have a bunch of footage of that. And then on top of that, I have uh, two ideas where some subscribers actually reached out and they're like, Hey, you should do this, blah, 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 this and that. So what we're going to do is, uh, next weekend I am going to film 
how much my drift car has actually cost me in the past five years. So from day one of getting it to now with how it looks, we're gonna do a complete breakdown of the cost to see exactly how much it is and kind of how much it is just the drift in general, um, in grassroots drifting at least. Uh, and then going from there, I'm also gonna make a video of what you should bring to a drift event. So basically all my kit and whatever I bring to the events um, to make sure that if something were to fail, I'd be able to fix it and whatnot. And again, for beginners, just to kind of give you guys a heads up if you're never, if you've never been to a uh, grassroots event or if you've been to a grassroots event and you're like, oh, I never even thought of that. Maybe I should do that. So uh, yeah, that's basically what we're gonna work on. I'm pretty excited about it. I know it's, it's pretty cool to actually look at that thing and just be like, hey, like it takes a lot of work to put into it, you know what I mean? But um, we'll go over tools, uh, apparel, uh, tent setup if you're gonna camp out, uh, practically anything just to be ready at an event if it were to rain or just be a normal day. So just got back home. I am super excited to say that the daily is not leaking any oil, so that's a plus. So we did a job well done. With that extra footage coming, we'll definitely next weekend be working on the drift car. So. Finally, we'll be able to work on that thing, get that thing ready for the season so we can drive with the guys because Cody already hit event one. So we're one event behind. We need to make sure that we're still together so we can just smash doors. But uh, yeah, going on from there, if you guys have not subscribed to the channel, we are so close to 7,000 subscribers. I think, I believe at this moment, we only need 12. 12 subscribers and we hit 7,000. And then I have some cool stuff to give away to you guys. So that's just showing my appreciation for you guys and you guys always sticking along and sh showing all the support on all the different social media is sick so i really appreciate it guys it's really cool of you going out from there make sure hit that subscribe button and if you're looking for any additional content all you have to do is click one of the links here and i'll catch you on the next one peace